Now this is a this is your standard hive top that you'll see on on most beehives. Commercial guys kind of do things a little different, but I'm still a fan of the the shiny aluminum topped lids for hives. Um, and I'm going to show you a way to make one now that's virtually free, depending on where some of your materials come from. But before I do that, um, I just wanted to show you something in. in the future I'm going to show you videos on how to build beehives for free and a bunch of other things but I want to show you a little tip first if you have an opportunity pick you up some of these these are just old I got them from a dump they're just uh, shelf supports for a shelving unit and they make a great thing to do all these projects um, that I'm going to show you how to do on if you don't have anything like that you might be able to pick up a piece of angle iron and put it on a you know like a 2 by 4 I think they make something called T-iron that you could put down, but it's a great way for you to be able to clamp things up and build and paint things. Um, I'll show you more here in just a second when I get set up. I do a lot of work with pallets, and there'll be a lot more on that. But the other day, I was in need of some, some more lids for 8 or 10 more hives. And uh, this is the, the way I have done it in the past, is I'll use a sheet of plywood and then trim it out and do the tin but I wanted to I do my best to try to use my materials as wisely as possible so what I did was I used all of my scraps I wanted to uh, I needed to, in the past uh, I build my hives like I said primarily out of pallets but I had a situation where I needed to have a lot of uh, a lot of nukes built up really quickly so I built them out of a sheet of plywood and I can I'll show you that on on a future video but what I did was I took the excess pieces and I put them here I put them here on this contraption and as you can see you can lay these they were in individual slats and I glued them clamped them up real good put a couple concrete blocks on them so they wouldn't bow or cup on me and when I was done, then I trimmed them to size. This is one you can see I've already done that too. But when you're doing this, all you really need to make sure is that you've got flat edges and make one side here flush. And it doesn't matter about this side over here. Okay, this side can be, some will be a couple inches longer, What it doesn't matter. You just need a couple of good size and then you can trim them to the right side. The correct size for these, for these lids to come out to be is Hang on a second, I'll get a tape measure and show you. Your finished size should be 18 by 22, okay? 18 by 22, that's what you're after. All right, and I'll show you, I've already done up eight or 10 of these when I was approached by somebody to go ahead and make a video so they could see how I did it. Otherwise, I would have shown you an actual glue up process, but I think you can handle that. Now I'll show you what I do next. Hold on one second while I get set up. Now for the skirt of this, what you're going to want to use is a 1x2. It really wouldn't matter if I had a cheap you know, 1x3 that you came across or something like that. It re really doesn't matter. But um, I went to, I've got some of these 1x's here, these 1x2's. And some of them you can probably see the purple mark on. I went to uh, Home Depot and they had a couple of them in the, the bin for 70% off, which made them 30 cents a piece. I went to one of the guys that was there and told him, hey, look, the ones you've still got out here for a buck and a half are, are look like hockey sticks. They're just as torqued as the uh, the ones you got in the 70% off. So he just let me have whatever I wanted for 70% off. So I got about 10 of them. So they're about 30 cents for an 8-foot stick. I bet where you're at, they're probably all torqued up too because such thin material as this, it is bound to torque. It's, it's going to be hard to find a straight one. All right, now what I did was these two things here, they're, if you're going to be a, a serious you know, beekeeper and you plan to make a lot of your stuff, what you're going to want to have is you're going to want to have a pattern for everything you do so you don't have to dial everything in every time you're going to do it again. These are my skirt patterns. Let me show you what size they are. The long one is exactly 22, okay? And the short one, as you can see, is about 16, 
16 and just about three quarters. Okay. Now it took a while to dial in this piece, the short piece, because what you want to do is you want it to fit as tightly as possible as you can. So once you have these as your patterns, what you do, there's an easy way to do this. Obviously be careful with your saw. But if you turn around and you you match up your pattern all the way down your stick that you want to cut and then you turn around and you bring the saw down and you move the board flush up against your blade I'm trying to do this without a tripod then uh, you see now now if I cut this they'll be exactly the same size which is what I want. It takes no time and I don't have to turn around and measure and mark it with a pencil and be off by a blade, blade thickness or anything else. So I'm going to cut the two more, well the four pieces I need for this one and then I'll be right back and show you how to put it together. Now when you get your pieces cut to the size that you want and I always make sure that you know you keep your pattern and don't let them get away from you and don't use them up. Go ahead and just keep them, label them. Put them where you know where they're at. Now, uh, by the way, the glue that I use to do this is type on three. Um, and I, it's never let me down. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to take this the long piece, start on the long piece, and you're going to glue it to this outside edge, even bringing it out a little bit over the edge. Okay? because I try to maximize the amount of room that I'm going to have so in case the wood's swollen or something I won't have any trouble getting this back off all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue along here and then I'm going to stand this thing up and I'm going to I'm going to air nail it through the top up this way okay I'll do one and then I'll show you what it looks like now what you do here is I start from the right side and I work to the left don't do the ends and then go back in and fill in the middle. Don't do it that way. Because if this was, uh, you know, bent or torqued to where it was out away from the, you could, you could work it out as you stapled it. But if you go ahead and do both ends and you try to come back, you could have a hump in the middle and you're not going to get it out at that point. All right. So I do that now. Now what I do here is you want to do both short sides. Okay. You can do all kinds of fancy corners if you want to, but I promise you the bees don't care. So the only thing that you really got to get right here is make sure that this is not out like that. Because you will be inundated by hive beetles and ants and who knows what else. So all you're really trying to do is just get that corner to be tight. Okay, now I'm going to do this short side and then I'm going to do this short side over here. And then I'll come back before I do the top. Okay. Okay, now here's where we are so far. All right, and by the way, in case in case you're curious, I'm using uh, let's see, Dewalt 18 gauge, inch and a half uh, staples, and it's this little Bostitch stapler, which has been great. All I've used it for is the beehiving stuff, and it's worked phenomenally. Never had a jam or anything else. Um, all right, now I'm going to wipe some of this glue off. Not that it matters, but I'm going to wipe that glue off, and then I'm going to put this last piece in as so and I'll show you what it looks like and when you're done here's what you're left with see? it's nice tight seams don't see any air cracks and as far as the inside goes yeah this is made up of one two three panels and the one over here which was I can't tell looking at it rather I built it or it's store bought but it was made with I probably made it. Um, it's just got one panel. But like I say, the bees won't care. Um, now what you need to do, this is where it's minor, but make sure you know what color you want the sucker before we go to the tin. So I'm going to go ahead and paint a couple of these. And then I'm going to show you, well, first of all, as far as the scrap went when I got done, that's how many I ended up with. Two four, six, eight. This one we just did together is nine. And I got the wood over there and my saw is sitting on piece for the last one. So I'll go ahead and paint one of these real quick. 
and then I'll show you how to do the tin. The tin. Okay, while this is uh, drying out here, um, you see I don't bother to paint the top, I just paint the sides because the top will be covered with tin anyway. But I, I go ahead and I painted the box and I painted the screen bottom board. Incidentally, um, that box is made out of pallets, as is this right here. Um, and I'll do a video on that at another time to show you how to make those. But uh, in case it matters to you, the, the paint that I use is Bare, uh, Bare Premium Primer in one, um, various colors, exterior. The, the, you can use, obviously this paint is I think $27, $28 a gallon, um, but I buy it when they have $10 rebates, so I think I got it for $15 to $16 a gallon and I buy it when it's on sale and get all I need. You can use a lot cheaper paint if you wish. Just make sure that whatever paint you use to paint your beehive, you want something that has low or no VOC, VOC, which is, I believe, volatile organic compounds. And that's what you want because the bees don't like this, the stink of the paint. And this doesn't have any smell to it at all. All right, so now, as far as the tin goes, um, this flashing, I got at a local hardware store. Um, I know they sell it at Home Depot and Lowe's. I don't know what sizes, but what this is is 24 inch. Okay. Um, if you remember, that lid is 22 inches. This is 24 inches. That way, I'll give me an inch on each side. And likewise, that means I'm going to need, because that's 18 inches wide, I'm going to need a 20 inch wide piece. So I'll have the same inch all the way around. First thing I'm going to do is use my square, make sure that I can draw a straight line to cut off this crooked line, and then I'll cut myself a 20 inch piece out of that uh, with just some regular tin snips, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, the next thing you're going to do, I cut up that roll of tin, um, you're going to turn around and put it silver side down, and as this is a golder side for some reason that comes up. I keep calling it tin, but I guess technically it's aluminum sheathing. All right, now what you want to do is just kind of eyeball it and center it in that spot, okay? About the same all the way around. And then with your marker, draw a line along this edge on the tin and on the opposite edge of the tin, okay? So when you're done, it looks like that. Okay, now what you do is you want to bend along that line. This stuff is not terribly tough, but it's, it does have a little bit of fight to it. So what you do, and by the way, you may want to do this in gloves. Normally I have gloves when I'm cutting tin, but I didn't today. Um, you're going to want to bend this at a 90 degree angle, this right here, straight up. And do the same on the other end. Okay? Okay. Now, as you can see, I bent that up and then I put the wood back in here. And you can see it, it fits pretty snugly against it. Alright, it's just sitting in here. I haven't stapled anything yet. There's the other side. Alright, now I've reloaded my air, my air stapler with 3 quarter inch narrow crown staples, 18 gauge as well. And what I'm going to do, Hopefully you can hear me okay. I've got a fan running because it is right now 101 degrees here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here about halfway down this tin and I'm going to put a line of staples all the way across it. I'm going to spin it around and do the same to the opposite end. And then I'll show you how we do the other two. Okay? Alright, and that is what you end up with along there. Okay? Now, what you're going to do here to make this nice and pretty this corner Oops. you're going to cut this corner at a 45 okay and the other one the same just like that top one out of your way for a minute. Well, actually I misspoke. This is, you want to bend this one in. The, the bottom one you want to kind of, now the side that's down like this, you're going to cut a 45 
on both sides. And then you're gonna bend this, this tab in on both sides. And then you're gonna work this up. Okay. And start at this end to put a staple in here and work your way down. Do that to both sides. And then when you're done, you come back this little tab and you just air staple it down. And you should be done. All right, one second I'll do this and we'll come back and look at it. All right, and when you're done, you're in. That's what you're left with. All right. Um, you know, this is not something I do one at a time. You know, as you can tell, when I need new tops, I need 10, 15 of them at a time. Likewise, the boxes or the bottoms, because the hardest thing is get set up to do this, you'll find. Um, but my cost in this was a 30 cent board that I got about a lid and a half so I probably got 20 cents in the wood and this uh, aluminum sheathing depending on how you buy it it's between a dollar a foot and two dollars a foot so I I probably have a dollar maybe a dollar fifty in a lid and I haven't priced them in Man Lake or or Brushy Mountain lately but they're probably I don't know 15 18 dollars I would imagine but uh it's a it's nice it's a good satisfaction when you can build something out of basically what most people would call trash so there you go um, subscribe down below like the video and if you have something you'd like me to uh, to make um, let me know more videos to follow thank you